So five years ago, I traveled for the first time in my life to the Amazon, and I landed in Ata Floresta in the state of Mato Grosso in Brazil. Ata Floresta means high forest in Portuguese, but unfortunately, there's hardly any forest left. It's actually been replaced by cattle grazing and further afield by soybeans. At this point, I banned beef from my diet and I decided that I would devote the rest of my career to trying to protect healthy standing forests. My name is Mireille Perrin. I work for the Good Energies Foundation. It is a private um, Swiss-based foundation whose mission is to mitigate and reduce poverty caused by climate change. Over the past 20 years, I've worked on climate and sustainability issues across the world, from Sri Lanka to Pakistan, from Indonesia to Brazil. And one thing remains constant. There are many ideas and many solutions based on nature which could result in carbon savings. For example, what if we could reduce greenhouse gas emissions by building with wood? It turns out that the construction sector today is a big emitter of greenhouse gas emissions. It represents nearly 40% of total global greenhouse gas emissions. That's more than the transportation sector. Out of this 40%, 28% of the emissions come from the energy that is used to heat, to light and to cool the building. And another 11% comes from the construction processes, but also the construction materials, such as steel and cement. The problem is that construction is expanding rapidly. And we know that there are projections which say that basically in the next 40 years, we will roughly be adding, in terms of construction and building, a size roughly equal to the city of Paris every single week for the next 40 years. So this makes us wonder, is it possible for the construction sector to lower its environmental footprint or even to give back to the environment? Well, it's possible. And that's exactly what was happening about 50 years ago when the buildings were made of wood, of trees. In fact, we know that the use of concrete and steel increased rapidly with the boom of skyscrapers uh, and the rapid urbanization. But today, we have new technologies that allow us to build multi-story buildings with wood. For example, we have a new technology called cross-laminated timber, which consists of different wood panels which are glued at opposite angles. And this is really driving the mass timber movement today. In fact, there's a whole family of different mass timber products, which today are lighter, they are stronger, they are more attractive, and they are even more fire resistant than concrete and steel. So where does this take us? In fact, it may seem counterintuitive in terms of fighting the climate crisis, but an increased demand for wood and increased wooden buildings doesn't necessarily have to lead to result in increased deforestation and increased emissions from land use change. In fact, if you look at the past 15 years in the Northern Hemisphere, forest cover has actually increased by nearly 250,000 square kilometers. That's about the size of the UK. And at the same time, we also know that mass timber construction, specifically in Europe, has expanded rapidly. And then outside of these areas, especially in the regions where deforestation is rampant, we need to proceed much more carefully. And we need to assess the safeguards that will ensure that an increased demand for wood in buildings does not result in forest loss but on the other hand, drives more sustainable forest management. Because one thing is very clear, wooden buildings will only be a sustainable, climate smart solution if forests are sustainably managed. Otherwise, it will only be greenwashing. So we also need to ensure that an increased demand for wood does not harm local communities. It is really important that countries assess the total area that they can devote to sustainable forest management and ensure that that does not impede on local communities' activities, such as agriculture. We know that there are limits to the number of wooden buildings that can be built, but clearly we are far from hitting those limits today. So I do have a vision, a vision that within this next decade, we can create a climate smart forest economy where forests, forest products, forest peoples, homes and buildings can avert a full-scale climate emergency. This will not be easy, nor will it be straightforward. We will need more research and we will need all stakeholders to work together. But clearly, thinking of wooden buildings 
as a planetary carbon sequestration strategy is an idea worth exploring, both for its necessity and also for its boldness. So what are the climate benefits of building with wood? Well, we know that roughly on average, a wooden building has a, a climate footprint, which is about 50% lower than any building built with cement and steel. In addition, there's carbon savings because the wood that is used in the building is storing carbon from the trees, and that remains for the lifespan of the building. The building can also be designed to be deconstructed, and where they are deconstructed, they can be used for something else or they can be recycled. In short, we can transition from buildings being a carbon source to being a carbon sink. Isn't that a vision worth chasing? And there are so many other advantages of building with wood using mass timber technology. The construction basically gets 30% uh, faster. Uh, it uses 50% less crew. Uh, usually you have 60% less truck traffic. The construction sites are much quieter and there's less uh, disruption. And mass timber uh, hospitals were actually built during the COVID-19 pandemic in Wuhan, uh, China, in less than two weeks. So have we started making uh, wooden buildings? Yes. Well, we have. And in fact, in Norway, there's the tallest timber tower. And the house in the Netherlands is the tallest residential building. And here in Geneva, I'm standing in front of two wooden buildings that house migrants from Afghanistan, from Eritrea, and from Iraq. Wood was chosen because of the possibility to have modular constructions, and these modular constructions respond to different migration patterns and migration flows. In addition to which, wood was chosen because the buildings can be deconstructed and may be used for something else. The wood was actually sourced from the local forests uh, in the mountain range just behind Geneva in the Jura. And then finally, wood was chosen for its biophilic properties such as stress reduction. And that's important for migrant populations that arise in Geneva, often with a lot of traumas and scars. So how can we scale this movement? Well, uh, governments can help by uh, stimulating demand. And for example, in Japan, as of 2010, we, there is a, a law that mandates that all buildings that are up to three stories high be made of wood. And in France, as of 2022, the government has required that all public buildings be made 50% of wood and 50% of renewable materials. Governments need also to put in place the right policies, including for sustainable sourcing of timber and timber products, incentivizing restoration where it makes place, and also to facilitate the flow of financing, such as through tax credits or subsidies. Governments and industry can work together to spur innovation by investing in research and professional education. So there is a future in which cities can support forests and forests can support cities, and where one of the most cost-effective ways to reduce greenhouse gas emissions is building made out of trees. I believe that it will take all of us to chart this future, and we all have our role to play. We can, for example, decide to buy only sustainable forest products when we buy furniture, and we can also decide that our next home or office building can be made out of trees. Thank you.